Mr. Wood? Present. Mr. Jusson? Present. Mr. Cole? Present. Mr. Kalman? Present. Mrs. Curley? Present. Yep. We, we have a quorum. The first uh, oh, motion to accept the minutes from the last regular meeting on January 16, 2018. A motion is an order. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. The first case this evening will be. Uh, Behind speak, and uh, it's, it's a reconsideration of no information, and uh, the presiding officer will be Mrs. Curley. Mrs. Curley, Mrs. Curley. Motion made for reconsideration. I move for reconsideration, Mr. Chair. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood. Yes, Mr. 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 Jusson? No. Mr. Coles? Yes. Mr. Callan? Yes. Mrs. Curley? Yes. It's, it's reconsidered. Yes, it's reconsidered. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, say a few words to begin with. Uh, that the, uh, there's some new information and I'd like to ask uh, Attorney Vitaly to come forward and uh, we can stay. Well, if you had requested uh, at the last meeting, uh, and uh, some of the other members joined with you, but we, we did follow up and do a plan. We did it for two reasons. One, because you would ask for it, but secondly, uh, to show Mrs. Uh, Snowden, who was the rebuttal, uh, how it was possible for her to pack uh, and not uh, utilize the right away. So the, I believe that plan was sent to, to the board and uh, to all of you. So that, that was done. Uh, Attorney McGloin represents uh, Mrs. Snowden and I've spoken with her and I've spoken with my clients and uh, we also did some further research uh, where we really couldn't find anything at the Lynn Public Library where we searched uh, the microfiche of the newspapers in 1939 to try to find um, whether there was proper uh, notice, even though the statutes in 1939 were not the same statutes as now. But the, the sum of that research has uh, led my clients to uh, reconsider and ask that you allow them to withdraw without prejudice, that they are uh, going to uh, conform to the parking, conform to a two-family, and uh, proceed as they can under the state building code and under the, the zone ordinance, and there's no need for you to take uh, any action or any further action because they're not seeking uh, relief at this time. So but they're gonna come back before the board? Are you saying you want to withdraw without prejudice? Correct. I spoke with Mrs. Chairman, you believe to withdraw without prejudice. You made a motion? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, can I just ask the standard of the family? So, you, so you just, you they don't want to do a big family, they're just going to keep it a two family, is that it? We think it's, we think it was both lawful as a three and a two, but we're going to keep it as a two for the time. Because that doesn't require any, in fact, we're now in a position where we have more parking than we're required because it's been, it precedes the uh, 1964 ordinance. We have on-site parking, and we have access to that parking because it's undisputed uh, that the land once was, there were two lots, and I provided the board with it. The, the lots were one lot in 1933. There, were, there was one lot with three homes on it. 135, 139, and 141. 139 and 141, there was a front house and a back house. 1946, uh, the property was conveyed to a family named Olinoff. Mr. Olinoff divided the property, and this is registered land, so it's a land court claim, into two lots, lot A, which became Mrs. Snowden's 135, uh, and lot B, which became 139 and 141. He also created the right of way, which uh, Mrs. Snowden's lot is subject to, in which this lot has the benefit of, and that's the discussion we had about how to access off Tudor Street 
the rear of this property. So that's on question. Uh, I think uh, Attorney McGoin has claimed that to Mrs. Snowden. I don't think Mrs. Snowden see it tonight because she understands that the right of way exists. The problem was, uh, in, for many years, she had used the right of way not to pass over, but to pack on. And one of the attributes of registered land is that you cannot get adverse possession, which means you own it because you used it, or what they call an easement by prescription, which means you own it because you used it, not against registered land. And the, I think the concern that uh, people had, uh, while I share the concern about packing in the area, uh, the only person who ultimately could be deprived packing is Mrs. Snow, because we have two spaces that we've had since time immemorial in the front driveway. And we have this space that we have access to in the rear, all of which go with the, the building. We have the benefit, at least right now, of adjoining spaces. Mrs. Snowden doesn't have that. And I think her concern was that if she couldn't park in the right of way, where could she park? And the plan that we sent to you shows that, um, notwithstanding the fact that she has a three family and she has uh, a need for additional parking, that uh, she can accommodate a parking space for herself and for her tenant. And so Attorney McGloin wanted that information. Uh, Mr. Callan wanted that. We provided that. But uh, in, in terms of uh, proceeding, we proceeded, because uh, no good deed goes unpunished, with what the building inspector told us to do. And we've already done it. He said, put in, I mean, you were there, uh, put in a second means of egress, which we did. Um, and then if the building were to become an, a use classification change, the building would have to be sprinkled and hardwired. My people were prepared to do that. So the only remaining issue, it seemed, was this packing one, and Mrs. Snowden's concern, and I think her concern has been uh, uh, at least reduced or mitigated because she now knows that she, while we need access to get to our space at the rear, it doesn't deprive her of the ability to park either on her land or to uh, jut out a little into the to right away, but she's not impeding access. And as long as she's not impeding access, then we have the spaces we need. So we're satisfied that we have, for our use, the spaces we need. As far as the impact on the neighborhood of our other people or what their requirements are, we're only speaking about the property we have. But it came about because they were all one lot. They were all owned by one person who back in 1946 divided. Previous to that, the owner had come to the Board of Appeals and gotten approval for the front house 139 and for the back house 141. The back house has many uses. It was a gazebo, you can see, I think, if you went out there. It was a stable at one point in time. It was a, a sauna or a hot tub. It's, it's gone. So there's only one house now on lot B. That's a home that uh, was the subject of the petition. And there's only one home on lot A, that's Mrs. Snowden's. And so, as far as those folks go, they've resolved any issues they have about uh, access to the parking and where the parking on site can and cannot be. And so, for those reasons, they don't choose to proceed. So, Mrs. Snowden, she has a three family? It's being used as a three family. So, that's why she only cares about one tenant? Well, there's a parking for her, which you said she could park in the right of way underneath her, her, her deck. And I see now there's another space out here that doesn't, it doesn't exist now, but it will. She could use that. that yeah. But what about the third, if it's a three family? Well, I, I only was aware from her of, uh, and, and they indicated to me that she had a tenant. But there are records here that say it was a two family, it was a three family, and I think it is being used as a three family. But I can't speak other than what she expressed to me was a concern about where, quote, she could park and her tenant could park. And I think we addressed that. So in your letter, you said you've got to take, take the uh, gate down? It's gone. Oh, it's gone. Yep. It's gone. Why would we make a motion? Why would we vote on withdrawing it when? We've already denied it. Well, you can go however you like. I'm asking. I'm saying, is that what because we're looking at doing? Is that I'm asking? Is that what? Well, that's what he's asking to withdraw without prejudice. It's not unusual either. To withdraw after the denial? Pardon me? To withdraw after the denial? Yeah, right. <clears throat> we did it on Hawkeye Street recently. 
Because of what was telling him? Yeah, because we're not asking time. you to do anything. Yeah. He's asking to withdraw without prejudice, which we do all the time. Which means he can come back at any time and come back next week yeah. if he wants. Right. Yeah. I second the motion. Yep. Please call the roll. Mr. Wood. Yes, to withdraw without prejudice. Mr. Jusson. No. Mr. Cole. Yes. Mr. Cowan. Yes. Mr. 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 Curly. No. Yeah. It's, you have it. It's a, it's a procedural vote. Okay, next case. Is that right, Mr. Lamar? That, that's correct. It was a procedural motion to uh, withdraw. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The okay, next case tonight will be uh, case number 9812, Minot Street. Uh, Mr. Cole, he was a clerk. Could you read the advertisement on that? Oh, which one? On Minot Street. Sure, Petition and Neighborhood Development Associates. Yeah. To, allow the sub Thank you. to allow subdivision of an existing lot in the zoning district R4, creating four undersized lots having less than required frontage and to allow construction of a single family dwelling on each. Lot one will have 4,156 square feet, 55.8 frontage. Lot two will have 6,933 square feet with 55.47 feet frontage. Lot three will have 6,802 square feet with square foot with 55.30 frontage. And lot four will have 4,000 square feet with 50 foot frontage. Thank you. I the public hearing is now all those in favor. Please, <laughs> please state your name and address. My name is Peggy Phelps, representing Neighborhood Development Associates. Okay. And we're here tonight to ask for um, yeah, permission okay. to build four single-family homes. Associate My associate is Chuck Thayer from Parsons and Thayer. And the architect is John Cole from Deer Hill and Architects. And his address. 60 Lewis Street in okay. Lynn, Mass. Thank you. And John's is? 40 Lowell Street in Peavey. Who is it? They John Crowell. Oh, okay. All right. From Deer Hill. But you have the floor. I do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're here tonight to request permission to build four single-family homes on um, undersized lots with less than the required frontage. We purchased this land from General Electric. Um, it is one of three parcels that we negotiated with GE in the Lower Westland area. And um, it's part of a larger uh, redevelopment and revitalization program that we're um, sponsoring in the neighborhood. So I we prepared a rendering so that you could actually see um, what the homes uh, look like. They're very similar in size and shape to the existing homes in the neighborhood. And the lots are 4,000 square feet, and those are also consistent with the lot sizes in the neighborhood. And then uh, Mr. Payo will run through. Yeah. Actually, what I have there are uh, two clear. This is the 19 to 22 clearing of the site. Uh, these two homes are, are still here, the, the front on uh, West Neptune. And then th there was originally seven houses on the property uh, with, with smaller lots and stuff, with a little right away coming into the back. Uh, and most of those were multiple families, two and three family homes. So there were quite a few units on the property. They were, they were demolished. GE bought all these properties, demolished them, and used this as excess parking, surplus parking. Right. Uh, 1973. Back when they had 18,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> and the other plan you uh, presented tonight is the site development plan. Uh, personally, the, the, the site is, is pretty, has all uh, children, so it was a parking lot. And what we were building is the four dwellings. Uh, with, with individual uh, two-car parking on, on the sides, uh, uh, porch, a deck, a, a rock, and the rest of the site will all be removed and all be landscaped, grass, clearings, and uh, another, you know. Uh, all, all the way back? All the way back to, yeah. to, to the property. Mr. Fayette, are you going to have uh, paving stones around too? Yeah. 
as well as the bituminous concrete. We, we always do the um, this front walk, the pavers, and we always do the walk to the backyard and pavers. Right. And then the only thing that's bituminous so is the driveway itself. So you're going to use your usual layer, yeah, we're going to use which you've been yeah, doing a good job all around Thank the city. You. Thank you. The home is um, six, six rooms, three bedrooms, one and a half bathrooms, and a laundry room on the first floor. So it has this ample space. And these will be sold to first time home buyers. Um, have you had any environmental issues with the site? No, there are no, this is a clean site. Um, we do have other sites that we purchased from GE that do have some environmental concerns, but this one is not. We have a clean bill of health on this site. No oil tanks. No oil tanks, no um, yeah. TCD, nothing. So it's a good site. And a lot of purchase from GE? Purchase from GE. Are they uh, looking to unload it? Yeah, GE has really, um, in the last couple of years, has really been looking to unload all, all the sites that they're not using. So they still have quite a few sites in that neighborhood that do have environmental concerns. They'll, you know, sort through those and then sell the properties that are saleable. And when you say the first time home buyers, is it any subsidized? No, they're not subsidized. They're market rate houses. They're not subsidized homes. And in fact, I mean, we did a lot of thought when we when we planned this development. We what we want to do is increase the home ownership rate in that area. So because it's a very high rental, uh, it's actually the highest rental um, percentage in the city. This area that we're concentrating in, which spans from Oakville to Minot and Weston to Bennett. So it's is just it, that, that area? it's El Oakville Minot. That's what we're referring to it now. It's you know south of um, McDonough Square. And it has a, a very um, high renter market. So we, what we're trying to do is, is turn that around a little bit so we can increase the home ownership. So everything that we do in this area as far as development will be home ownership. We won't sponsor any rental units in this Peggy, this isn't a criticism. Don't take it as a criticism. It's just an observance. Okay. I can ride all through Lynn and I know every house that you people built because they all look alike. Yeah, I, I, I know. This is, I Can't think... you do something a little different? It's just... You know what? I, I'll tell you, this house works well. And I think when you find something that works well, it, it just fits into the Can neighborhood. Can I change the front oh, of it a little or uh, something? Excuse oh. me. If anyone wants to talk to each other along the hallway, because these people have the floor, we're paying attention to them. In the back there, we're having a meeting, please. I'm sorry, Jean, I didn't hear the last thing you said. Hmm? I didn't hear the last thing you said. I said, said couldn't you change the front of it a little? Of course. There has to be something that you, you know, can do. You know, we can absolutely, we can absolutely different. change the front. But the but the house size itself, the dimensions oh, I don't mean exactly that. I just same. mean. Yep. We have, I have no problem, John, the master. Mm -hmm. He can certainly do that. But he you know, you know what I do. Yeah, of course I do. Of course I do. Well, I noticed that, to the, um, Jean's point, I noticed you have the... The first two on the right are just identical, and then the third one going from right to left is yes. as a stair. Right. I just thought I, I thought maybe you put the you know do it every other one instead of these two the same. And then it, it, it often depends where the um, telephone poles are. Yeah, I think other things in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
So this is, and we're actually like, we're gonna focus on most of the houses that sit on a corner, because we noticed in the area, those houses should be a, a, the statement for the street, and they're not. So we're gonna focus a lot of attention on those corner houses with nice fencing and trees and landscaping. Yeah, those trees help to clean the air. They certainly do. They certainly do. And it, it is, we did a lot of research on the trees. There's 22 health has 22 health components to trees. And one of that is that it, it slows down traffic. It, um, you know, you breathe better. You know, so just, I'll give you a list if you notice. Know, it's a great, yeah, I'll tell you, when I, when I started to look into it, I was amazed myself. So I tell everybody there's 22, yeah, 22 benefits of trees. So, um, what, we usually do a lot of landscaping. We have a healthy budget for landscaping. Okay, so you will look into changing the facade. We will look into changing the facade, absolutely. Do they, do they have decks? They do. They have a, a 12 by 12 deck on the That's back. That's the deck isn't okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other members have questions for the petition? Anyone else in favor of this petition? Anyone else in favor of this petition? Anyone else? In favor? Uh, here and then, I'll close the hand for those in favor, no those opposed. Anyone here opposed to this petition? Yes. Yes. What? Well, you might be in state your name and address. My name is Charles Self. I live at 135 West Neptune. I've uh, lived there about 35 years. Uh, my wife has lived there her whole life on the street. I have the single family house that abuts all of it, most of it. And the people next door who couldn't come because they're working. Yeah. Could you, could you show us on the plan where your house is? Oh, sure. I haven't seen it. It's, uh, it's, it's 135. This one here. I'm 135. This one here. Okay. Right. Can, can you show that to all members? Okay. Yep. So you can the plot house. Yes, sir. Yes. Yep. Okay. okay, you may speak. All right. Uh, there's a couple of problems. Um, traffic study. The traffic there is incredible going down that street and nobody has any parking. There's fist fights in the summertime about parking in the area. So I'm worried about that. Um, also, my uh, um, piping goes across that entire, in the last time the GE was in there testing it, and I said to him, there's only houses there, there's nothing, no oil, there's no spills, what are you testing for? They said they had to, it broke the pipes up. What kind of piping are you talking about? Um, sewer piping? It goes underneath that property, right out there. This is your property. Yes, sir. I've had to refute. Do you don't have a plan of that so we can look at it? No, sir. I don't. I'm sorry. Well, you, you know, in order to have any action with us, you have to show us proof. Yes, Mr. Kelly. You Cal. don't have it. Yep. All um, right. Continue. But, well, we're just worried about that uh, in, in the parking uh, problem, and then we looked at the house, and it's we're right. It's right on top of us. So. We're, we talked to everybody in the neighborhood about it. 99.5% everyone is in, excited about it, wants it to be there. What we're worried about is little things like that. The parking and if they're going to have an egress onto West Neptune Street well, or use minute. it as a parking. Let me, yep. let me explain you. As far yes, as sir. the parking, they satisfy what the city of Lynn requires for the parking. Okay. Okay. So. Other than that, you can continue. I don't right. interrupt you, but you have to understand. Um, they have proper parking. Right? Beautiful. Uh, what we're worried about is, like a few nights ago, and it's happened three or four times since I've lived there, a drunk comes down the street on a Saturday night uh, uh, or Sunday have, morning and hits out the cars. I got to hold you up. You got to stay on the. We have no control. You call the police if that happens. Right, exactly. But what I'm trying to do is make the point of, we got a traffic problem down there, and you know it's 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 going to affect everybody. And the people across the street, the two three families right across the street, notorious drug houses. We've called the police a million times, and it's constantly right. going we can't on. Can't help you on that. All right, but what I'm trying to say is all we really care about okay. is you know where West Neptune Street is on that corner of Minot. Yeah. They don't want to see a driveway coming on to yeah. West Neptune Street. Yeah. Can, I, then, can I show you something? Yeah. This, no, can you come up and show him that, that, uh, yeah, that, that you show, yeah, see that, that's what it's going to look like. 
So you, you couldn't see that because they were facing it towards us. Right. But is there going to be a driveway yes. on one step to them? Yes. There's going to be a problem because all the, the, the three single families and the adult two families, that's the only thing they don't want. They don't, they don't want a driveway there. Who was they? They have, who was they? Um, the Che family, the Ryan yeah, they, family. Are they here too? No, I told them I would come up and speak for them. Well, the place, right? do you approve of this rendering here? Yep. We Except that we, we approve, we, we don't approve of this. That's what we don't approve of. The driveway to on oh, West Central. Yeah, there was, there was never a driveway. When those houses were there, it was always on Minard Street. Yeah. But, but this is a, this is actually, this goes into the GE gate, so nobody actually comes down there unless they live there. Yeah. So right. it's, so for, for this yeah. person to back out of their street, I it's going to be no problem getting in and out. Yeah. I wanted this you to see that. I wanted you to There's see an that. ambulatory sign there, and we are put, going to put there, it says no parking there because of emergency vehicles. And you're going to put a, take the sign down and put a driveway in? Wait a minute, we're not going to do anything with it. It's not under our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. They have no control over the streets. You know what? So, city council. Right. We have control over off the streets. And that's what they're here for. Well, is there a further meeting for like that stuff? For parking and all that? Or it's anything? right here. They're showing it. Can I just say one thing? We've actually had two neighborhood meetings in this area. The first meeting we had seven people show up. The second meeting we had four. Yeah. We didn't know anything about it. it we were we dropped drop the flyers. We, we actually made big posters well, the, size, the size of did, this poster right here, put them on the telephone poles. Did they get a notice? Yes, they did. everybody got a notice. Are they in, they're in the butter, right? They're in the butter, oh, yes. they're in the butter for the butter? They're in the butter, right. Are That's how right driveway there? would be right next to this driveway right. where they want to put. Yeah, it's, you, you have no idea what, 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 how we're going to have to live right there like that. No. It's not, why can't you put the driveway over here? It's a Minot Street deal. Because, why that, it have because then it ruins lines? their yard. They won't get a yard. They'll have, when the driveway can go right here and they go right into There's their house. It's, that's the only problem. That's our only problem. We're all going to fight. All, all, the, all the abutters are going to fight that one thing. Other than that, it's a great project. That's the only problem. Anyone else here opposed to this petition? Anyone else here opposed to this petition? Anyone else here opposed to this petition? Kevin on? I close the hearing. What is the wish of the board? Can I ask a question? Yeah. Is, is there, there, no, there was no feasibility to have the driveway come out on my street? I, I don't believe I, it makes sense to put it there. Mr. Chairman, I think that question should be answered by Mr. Fayon. Could, could you answer that question? Yeah, I just want to say one thing. By, by the, the way this is laid out, it gives you maximum privacy because you've got your driveway plus their driveway before you see the house. If you want to push the house over, then, you, then you're talking, you know, talking. This building would be a lot closer to your to your house. The lot is so small; it looks like it's actually it's actually bigger than your lot. Their did, 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 did driveway sits right here. Yeah. It is a, a, a wood fence there. This is our driveway here. It's going to be some 15, 18 feet between the driveways. That's what I'm saying. And there it's is a set of pockets there still there. There is. Which means could, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was, what we were out doing the survey work, there was a uh, little bit of cast back on the street. There, there is a, a no parking sign right there. On the plan, uh, it may have to be located to put the driveway in. And, and there was a no parking sign oh, right like there, yeah. But there was a car park, or it was there like that. It was there like two or three months ago. What's the no parking? Uh, it was either no parking or resident park. I can't remember. It was a very low sign, and there was one car park. So they were just over, over here someplace. And I was there like four or five hours. Okay, you got a new fence too, right? I don't know, the fence is up. Uh, they usually put fences up. They usually send a new fence. They're going to put a new fence where I'm They like to put a new fence. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You get a, he has the permits yes, before. Sir. We can't start an argument back and forth. Oh, no, no argument. All right, Mr. Please. Now. Motion to approve. Go ahead. What do you want to ask? 
Is it a no parking sign or is it a residential no parking? It's a no parking from here to the corner because right across is an emergency ambulance parking sign for Officer Ryan's mother and uh, younger brother. They, an ambulance is always being called there to take them away. So they, a Pete Capano made that space open because the fire trucks always get there before the ambulance. So they had a place to park. And I don't know, they've only, I think 10 times this year, usually it's like 20 times a year. And there's a dead end sign. And there's a dead, dead end, and it's a dead, dead end. end street. So anyone who goes down with the house to either make a U turn or. Yeah. Is there a dead end sign? Yes, sir, right on the corner. Anyone else have any questions on the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, motion to approve. Second. Motion made by Mr. Shona to approve the grant. Second by Mr. Cole. Please call the roll. Mr. Webb. Yes, sir. Mr. Shona. Yes, sir. Mr. Cole. Yes. Mr. Callan. Yes, sir. Mrs. Curley. Yes, sir. Yeah. Petition has been granted by unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next case this evening is case number 9815, 426 Boston Street. Mr. Cole, can you read the printing on that? There you go. There you go. Something's quiet down. Okay, case number 9815-426 Boston Street. Petition of Winthrop Property Services, LLC by its attorney Samuel A. Vitale. To allow conversion of an existing mixed use structure to four residential units in a garage in zoning district H1. Where the existing structure encroaches upon the minimum front and side yard setbacks. Thank you. Public hearings now open for those in favor. I'm, I'm attorney for Charlie Whitman. Thank you, Marvin Howell. He's a principal of Winter Property. So prior to this building, uh, most people who are residents of these would be familiar with the site. On the corner of the Federal and Boston Street, it joins the bus, uh, the Hibernian Hall. Uh, it's in an industrial zone that's across the street from the matter that was before you uh, some time ago. The gas station is being uh, refurbished. Uh, the history of the property is such that it has been one of mixed use. It was, uh, for those of you that have long memories, it was Fred's Tire. Um, it was most recently an electrical contractor. But basically, most of the uses related to Excuse me. Either auto, Excuse me. Either auto supply. Yeah, can I ask you to shut that door, sure. please? Uh, or they related uh, to the fact that there were a couple of uh, residences here, uh, two dwelling units. So over the years, it's had mixed use. Uh, back in January, uh, at Small Bernard Bar Property in the late fall of 2017, the reason we went to the City Council is that, with respect to the use, what he proposes is a residential use, and under the zone ordinance, uh, a residential use in an industrial district requires City Council consent. City Council uh, granted consent uh, on January the 9th for uh, the proposal that we have uh, before you. Uh, we satisfy the on-site packing requirements. One of the things you may have noticed when you were there, and certainly Mr. Maldonado noted from the first day he was there, is that the prior owners had uh, fenced the property uh, to the detriment of his neighbors, uh, which were essentially the uh, Hibernians who own uh, lots of the joint. Uh, the impact of that fence uh, on the Hibernians was that it hampered their access uh, to their handicapped, only handicapped access area. It limited their ability to go from one property that they owned to the other. Um, and in a sense, we really don't know the reason that the fence was put up. But the first time I met uh, Theo at the site, Say we take the fence down because we didn't see why it was done other than spite. We didn't really know. Um, and then in terms of issues, our only real concern was that we 
uh, satisfy the on-site parking requirement, which we can do. Um, the, uh, the lot being on the corner has, under the zone ordinance, uh, two fronts. It fronts on Boston and it fronts on uh, Federal. But the building is there. Nothing's changed in terms of the footprint of the building. The building is going to go up in height but not exceed uh, the zone ordinance requirement. So the footprint remains the same, the lot remains the same, but because now the use has changed, we don't conform to residential uses and the building never met on one side, the front setback, and then there's an ordinance that says if you abut uh, along the street line, uh, notwithstanding the fact that you're on an industrial lot or a business lot, a lot that is zoned or used for residential purposes, then you've got to have a side line of seven and a half. So we have it on one side, but we don't on the other. So that after the city council, the next step would be to go to uh, South Plan Review because it's not a one family or a two family and anything more than that requires site plan review and anything of 5,000 square feet, even though we're not adding 10 or more spaces and we've talked about that in the past. So we have on-site parking. We have a building that's footprint is the same. Its use is going to be uh, increased for the residential purpose. And uh, because the current structure is non-conforming, we came to you to get relief for the front setback on one side and for the side line on the other. Uh, along the way, we've been out to the site, we met with members of the uh, Hibernians, and uh, they were represented uh, in this matter by Attorney Paul Keating, I think, who's known to you, and he and I discussed, along with members of the Hibernian, uh, providing them with what they would need to satisfy their needs. There's another couple of anomalies about this lot. One is that the city has an easement because Strawberry Brook goes right underneath in a culvert and sort of an angle towards the Saugus River. The second is that notwithstanding what you see, a portion of this lot is registered land. We're back to registered land. And according to the registered land deed, we owned 75 feet. So there's like seven feet of no man's land between us and the Hibernians. Neither the Hibernian deed or our deed accounts for this. And we think it's because the city took this right away easement, even though the culvert's below uh, the ground. Uh, so to the extent that we own the land, we can give relief sought by the Hibernians, which is a plan that I said to you that Attorney Keating and I have discussed. And in uh, sort of a trade-off, here's the trade-off. There was an existing right of way on a lot that abuts on Boston Street that once had a house that the Hibernians use now for parking. They own three feet, uh, there's a right of way three feet on their land, there's a right of way three feet in our land. So we have a, a purpose of using uh, more than three feet, which is to put a, a roll off dumpster for the apartments uh, on that spot. Uh, so essentially what we've talked about is a reciprocal agreement, which is that we would extinguish, since the only people who have the benefit of the subject of the right of way are the Hibernians and us, we have the ability to extinguish it. It didn't go all the way down, it just went a portion of the way down. We think, and I was explaining to me that there used to be a house back there, so at the time somebody had a right of way to get to that, the house doesn't exist, it's a parking lot. Uh, and, and so it services, uh, winter properties need uh, to eliminate that right away. And in exchange for that, uh, we would give to the Hibernians as a corner, like an isosceles triangle at the upper corner, which would allow them to be able to access uh, from one lot that they have mm -hmm. to, the to the other lot that they have, where they couldn't really do that. If you saw the way it was configured and with that fence, you just couldn't make a right angle turn. And then the last portion was out there in no man's land, this portion that is at the uh, side of actually the Boston Street property and the side of the Hibernian property, it, it squeezes their handicapped access, this, this fence. So uh, if the fence came down, they just want the ability to cross over that. Well, they had the ability to cross over it until somebody put that fence up. So the offending portions of the fence would be removed, the exchange would be with the only immediate abutter who surrounds us, the Hibernians, that we would they would agree to eliminate their portion of that three foot right away, and we would agree to give them an exchange, and that's why you have a series of the plans. So we think that 
we addressed uh, the concerns that were expressed. I know they had some problem uh, unknown to me uh, and until I went down there, which is that in the construction of the, the gas station, the police told the contractor to pack the contract vehicles over the weekend in that lot because, quote, nobody's there, but the hibernians have functions. <laughs> so we talked with them about, uh, and, and Peter's got some experience about, because he owns other properties, about surveillance cameras, but surveillance cameras are always like after the fact. And so that, that to the extent that if they, if they wanted, but they didn't, we could have put a fence across, but the construction's almost done on the gas station site. They use it because they rent the hall out on weekends. We don't have any need other than to put a dumpster down towards the Boston Street side and roll it off once a week. So I think that accommodation with our neighbor uh, solved the only problem. And as far as use, we got permission from the city council. And why we're coming to you about the sideline and the uh, front setback is that when we get to site plan review, if we don't have that relief, they're going to say you're going to have to go get a variance because it's non conforming as to the sideline and the front setback. So we decided to come to you next, and then if, if you were to approve, we next go to site plan review. Uh, but uh, essentially, the, the, the building that you see, and I, I sent plans that show the various units, the heights, the elevation, I think all of you have those. I have larger plans that really are the same set that you have. Um, and in terms of uses, I would think that given the history of this property, that a residential use would be a welcome use because, as I say, it had been an auto body shop, an electrical shop, tire shop. Um, and, and what you're seeing is the changing character of that area of West Linden. It had many, for many years, industrial uses and had uh, the, the accompanying kinds of business that are in industrial districts. And now, uh, with a much improved area, whether it's traffic, market basket, um, uh, old neighborhood, my guys across the street with their modern gas station, uh, the whole neighborhood has come up, and that attracts investment. Uh, we're talking about an excess of a million? Yeah, an excess of a million dollars uh, to refurbish this property. Does the crossing go to drive through that? Yeah. Yeah, the crossing, the ability to cross over. Yeah, but because of the angle, there's no way it can make a wide angle turn. Yeah, well, two things were the problem. One was the fence, which comes up on that side. And then the other was the one on the back side. Yeah. Yeah, and then about on the back side, there was this portion of Nomi's name, which we can only attribute to the city, yeah. no. I took an easement to protect strawberry work, which is below, and I'm sort of between the two buildings. Yeah. 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 Ye
uh, is Sutton, and we would be very happy to work with you and get a decent neighbor back in the neighborhood. Uh, to ask your comments, I'm sorry, yeah. 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 We'd be very happy to have a neighbor that's going to work with us and everything. I mean, it's, it's uh, parking is limited around there. We do have some, uh, especially coming up in the next month or so, sizable events coming up between St. Patrick's Day and a 5K road race and everything. And, uh, just that simple little drive through there to get to our back lot where our dumpster is and all that is critical. And on the other side with that fence going down to Federal Street, I consider that being um, a, a safety hazard where emergency vehicles could not get into our establishment if need be. And that's the only handicap access on, the, on that side of the building for because uh, uh, it's a, a low ramp right into the back hall, the lower hall. Right. And, um, it, it, I consider that a safety violation, that fence there, but they just... Yes, it definitely is. It's a hazard. Right. Yeah, so. Is that fence going to come down? That's the one they're agreeing yeah. to take down. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yes. Maldonado, uh, when, when do you plan to take the fence down? Uh, I will say the next yeah. week or two. Yes, the, uh, <coughs> In the next couple of weeks. Yes, it is. Couple of weeks, <laughs> no, because it's a big safety factor from that fire. Well, the corner... The situation is already being discussed with the lawyers and we are going to work right away in the next few days. We're going to find a solution to have them have a free access from lot to lot. And I'm talking the rest of the fans in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So right. we have to go to plan review and a few more things. You have to what? Site plan review and we have to go. Oh, site plan, yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Anyone else here in favor of this petition? You don't have none to close the application. Anyone here opposed to this petition? Anyone here opposed to this petition? You don't have any opposed to here opposed opposed. What is the wish of the board? Motion to grant. Second. Motion by Mr. Is it Wood to grant and Mrs. Crowley to second? Please call the roll. Mr. Wood? Yes, to grant. Mr. Sun? Yes, sir. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Callan? Yes to Grant. Mrs. Curley? Yes to Grant. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Roland. Petition has been granted by unanimous decision. Vote. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Next case, Mr. Stephen. Yes, please. One seven case number nine eight one three one seventy five one eighty nine Allen Street. If these people Which one are we doing? Yeah. Alley the one on Alley Street. It doesn't say much anyway. Yeah, no, I got a petition on one seventy five one eighty nine Alley Street LLC. To an allow an undeveloped lot in zoning district WF1 to be used as a motor vehicle storage lot. That's WF5 stands for Waterfront District 1. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Thomas DeMarcus. I'm an attorney in Lynn with offices at 56 Central Avenue, and I'm representing the petitioner. That LLC is owned by my cousin, the tastefully named Tom DeMarcus. Uh, who owns uh, Old Neighborhood Foods on Water Hill Street. Uh, that used to be, as you all know, the hood plant. And after that, it was owned by East Coast Lobster. My cousin purchased it about five years ago with plans of developing that property. He ended up knocking the old, first he was gonna renovate the building, but it was so misshapen and um, a bunch of different levels that he just ended up knocking it down. And then when he uh, was making plans to develop it, it turned out that uh, because of the flooding on Alley Street, the Lynn Water and Sewer Commission is under an EPA order to fix the storm drainage issues there. And until they do it, it doesn't make sense for anybody to build anything at that end of Alley Street. <clears throat> so um, talking to Councilor Capano, uh, the biggest issue that the uh, residents of Valley Street have is a number of cars on the street. So uh, 
My, the petitioner is using this as a parking lot. Uh, uh, about 150 cars, maybe 200 cars, are the overflow from Pride Chevrolet on the Linway. <coughs> In addition to which, there's a body shop across the street owned by a gentleman named Nixon. Is he here today? Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mr. Nixon um, uh, rents uh, 40 spaces, I believe it is, from my cousin. and. Uh, and uh, if th he didn't have uh, those spaces in that lot, uh, according to what Councilor Capano tells me, there wouldn't be any place to park the 40 cars that he's parking there except on the street. And uh, my cousin uh, parked some of his old neighborhood vehicles there. And then uh, the other people that parked there, there are three or four landscapers or tree surgeons that have um, small businesses in Lynn, they're residents of Lynn, they have small businesses in Lynn. They have no place to park their trucks except on the street. So uh, by uh, allowing them to park there, he gets um, their trucks off the street, which is a betterment of the neighborhood. He'll develop a lot as soon as the Water and Sewer Commission takes care of the flooding issues. Um, but right now, there's nothing he can do with it. So um, it seems that um, uh, this is a good thing for the neighborhood because it gets a lot of cars off the street. What happens when he develops the property? Right. What, what <laughs> happens to all these cars? Yeah. That's great coming off the street now, but when he wants to develop the property in a year, two years, whenever the sewer gets fixed, what is the 40 cars over here plus all these landscapers, the, where do they go? If he develops the property, uh, he's going to develop it in such a way that it's going to be a benefit for the city of Lynn. He's either going to create jobs. One idea that he's tossed around is to do a similar thing to what Nick Menino did at Lynn Lumber, which is a business park for businesses that desperately need, and what Jerry Raffaelli is doing down on River Street, uh, and there's a crying need for that. Another, um, I, I, I'm not saying he's going to do that, but that's the most recent idea he's discussed with me. And to answer your question, it's going to be the same situation as it was when the hood plant was there, or when East Coast Lobster was there which is the only people that could park there were the uh, employees and customers of those companies. I, I don't disagree with that. I'm just wondering why you're speaking to how it's a benefit when it's not a long, it's not a permanent solution. It's just a short-term benefit for your client, not for anything it's else. It's a short-term benefit for the neighborhood, too. It's better than fencing off the lot, keeping it a vacant lot, and not allowing anybody to park there. Who knows yeah. when that's going to get improved, you know? Maybe I can throw some light on your question. I talked with Councilor Capano at 4 o'clock this afternoon about everything. He said everything hinges on them redoing Alley Street. The underground, the utilities, the sewer, the storm, the water. And nothing can be developed down there without that. And he said he, although he don't like the cars back there, he said they've been doing a great job keeping the place clean and he'd be willing to agree to three years of that temporary approval. And then if they were finished with the work on Alley Street, then they could go to a different, you could uh, appear before the board again and ask for an extension if you have it. You know, that's consistent with our intent, which is that this be a temporary solution to a problem. Right, but this, However, this is what counts what the panel wants. He, he didn't mention that to me, but I obviously... Well, he did to me. But, but obviously, yeah, you know, I credit everything that you're saying. But it seems to me that it makes a little bit more sense, or at least it would make me happier, I don't know if it makes any more sense, to say that this temporary use will be allowed until the infrastructure is redone so that I don't have to come back here in three years. It's good for business and good for the legal yeah, fees. I, yeah, I but, know, but, but he didn't say that and we'd have to continue it and we don't want to do that. No, we don't want to do that. Yeah, Let's, well, all I'm suggesting is he's leaving that open-ended that if things weren't straightened out on Alley Street, that you, know, you, could, you could increase that amount of time. So he's leaving it open, he says, you know, they're good people there, whoever's in that area, this gentleman, and, and they're looking after the area. And he lives just down the street, he's by there all the time, as you well know. Right. So, I mean, my own idea, the members, is what, 
what the white council wants. And I think hey, Mr. Capano, you know, he's heavily uh, invested in that ward because he does live there and he's lived there pretty much his whole life. And yes, anything, he anything he wants is fine with me. So, yeah. how long have all those cars been parked in that lot right now? For quite a while. You know, what happened was um, I don't think anybody realized that you couldn't have a parking lot or a vehicle storage lot in Linden. Mr. Mookie, uh, the Deputy Building Commissioner, brought it to Pride Chevrolet's attention, and Pride Chevrolet contacted my cousin, and they contacted me, and they told me to get the ball rolling. I don't know the exact answer to your question, Mrs. Curley, oh, but so I know it's been for at least a, several months. So this gentleman here has been parking his 40 cars in that lot for... Where did you park the cars before they were in that lot? I'm sorry? Wait a minute, excuse me. Can you give me a name and address for the record? It's uh, 178 Alley Street, my shop at Calls Pollution Out of Breath. And the space that they talk about is two of them. One across the street, one to the left, and one to the right. That uh, I'm renting from his cousin. Mm -hmm. So, well, but where were your cars being parked before? When we got a chance to speak to the weather, my attorney the, to represent me, and then we're going to make the is this your attorney next to you? Is this your attorney next to you? Can you give us your name and address? Do you think we're going to be trying to get Joseph Simon? Thank you very much. How many parking spaces do you lease in Mr. Blackers at this time? I have been figured out how many, but I don't have no more than 20 cars there. And the reason is because I do a lot of car dealerships. So the only cars in and out okay, they have um, loaners. And that's the only reason they need that space. But to answer your question, I was parking before uh, right next to the Benayari Brothers. Used to be when you all got about the property, which is adjacent to my lot. Well, we had a chance to speak. That's why my attorney is here, so we can argue the issue right here. So, in other words, you have a lot next to where uh, Albie Bonilla used to run his That's business. one of his lots, the attention that he wants to park cars there, according to his cousin. How many, how many contractor spaces do you rent, other than the undisclosed amount of spaces that this gentleman rents? Because you have one member and he has another, so. Uh, I don't know, Mr. Gisono. There's, I think there's, uh, I, the only contract is a three or four landscapers, and I think they just take a, or tree surgeons. I asked my cousin today, who rents spaces there? He said, besides Mr. Nixon, Pride Chevrolet, and my cousin putting his own old neighborhood vehicles there, there's three or four landscapers or tree surgeons, and they take a few spaces each. But he didn't give me any Anyone else have any questions of the petitioner? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a favor this petition? Yes. You have a favor? No. Uh, You're opposed? In, in part. We're opposed in part. Oh. Uh, anyone else here uh, in favor of this petition? Anyone on the closing here opposed in favor and those opposed? Anyone here opposed to this petition? This is Mr. Nelson Samoya. He's the owner. Uh, of collision model uh, craft repair at, uh, at 178 Abbey Street. And, the, uh, and he's uh, owned the business since 2006. So, and uh, the, uh, at the time that he purchased the property, uh, he was always allowed access over the Benea property um, from the street um, along a, a path, uh, a horizontal path into his garage and also uh, egress. And Wait a minute, excuse me, sir. Is that across the street from where the petition no, is? No, but this is It's this on is, the same side? It's adjoining. It's the adjoining. In other words, what's here is 175, 189 Alley. It's on the left. Oh, he's hand. across the street, next to another lot that Mr. Yeah, so this, Marcus owns. So this has nothing to do with what we are talking about. No, no, this is, uh, because again, I, um, Mr. Samoya's property directly adjoins the democracy But I don't know, on the same side as 175, 179, uh, but the permit that he's... Wait a minute, Mr. Marcus, please. Okay. 
can we straighten out on this? My they talked about land across the street. My, my cousin owns a, the hood plan is 72 and a half thousand square feet. The plan that I submitted with the petition shows another lot owned by my cousin across the street that's 47,000 square feet. Yeah, but if they're talking about across the street, that's not before us. But I think just to give you some context, what he's saying is that his business is next door to my cousin's lot across the street. That's all. To try, I, I don't want to yeah. put words in his mouth, well, but I think exactly that's exactly what it is. I mean, the plot plan shows that. Yeah. It shows where Nixon's, uh, where you own a lot right here on Alley Street, 178, 180. 178, I own just You own that. And then the 170 Alley Street is now the owned near. by Mr. DeMarcus. Right. And how much parking space do you have on your lot? Very little, uh, just around the building. Before I purchased the building, uh, the previous owner of the uh, land or the uh, body shop there, they tell me that that's always going to be an access to get it in and out of my shop. I have three doors, three bay doors. Can you uh, come in here? Yeah. Can you deal with me? Right. Can you uh, yeah. ask questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, that issue is that he doesn't want to lose that right of access uh, from Alley Street uh, across the district of the non democracy property uh, to the shop in the back. And, uh, and so that's, you know, that's his concern issue. There's no easement though, right? Well, yes and no. Uh, to this extent, the, uh, the parcel that Mr. Samoy owns was once a part of Black B, and, and it was uh, and that lot was cut out and conveyed back in 1946. So at one time it was in common ownership. And that's an important issue here because uh, even though there's no uh, record right of way or record of easement, uh, the fact that uh, a lot comes out of common ownership, there is the implica implication of continued use, what they call implied easement. Uh, and the uh, and since Mr. Samoy was there in 2006, at the time it was in Benea ownership, he always had access um, from Alley Street, as I said, into uh, and out of his garage to get, you know, once he had repaired or unpainted or uh, otherwise worked on his uh, automobiles, uh, to get them you know, back out of his um, The concern here is that uh, if the parking uh, plan is approved, we really have no objection to the parking plan itself, but the concern again is continued access uh, to Mr. Samoyer, according to Mr. Samoyer, uh, to the front of the Well, did someone deny that to him? Well, they, what it is, is what happened is he, he laid out these uh, concrete barriers in front of my overhead door and not to be bringing this, but I know he owns a lot. He's been bullying me. Every single day, well, I had to take all my, all my cars out of there because he's under construction, whatever he's trying to do. But he brings these barriers that it's very difficult for me to uh, continue doing business. And I said to him, listen, if someone's going to push what I'm asking for you is, everybody, whoever you're going to rent it out to, they're going to have these right away. You cannot just fence in there. I've been here. I'm going to be the mayor. Just let me in with my cars there. He says, no, that's why you got the, that's why you got the uh, lots across the street. I said, but at the same time, you're pushing me against the wall and choking me. This is the only reason he's here to argue that, that it's been always a right away. Even when the Benea brothers were well, there. Well, if, if it's not it's on, the, on, the, uh, on the legal papers, it is not a right of way. I am. It's got to be registered over there in the Registry of Deeds in Salem, and if you can't show that, you know, um, is there anything you can do to help this man out? Look, you know, I, I don't know anything about that side of the street. I came here prepared to speak on the yeah, 175, I but I would talk to my cousin about it today, and he told me he put up, uh, he told me that Mr. Benia, Mr. Mr. Samoya was parking on the old Benia property, and that he put up Jersey barriers to, protect his own land and he yeah. put and he put them up well within the bounds of the uh, uh, 
of his property yeah. so that there would be no question. He put it two, three, two, two and a half feet away. Amen. Amen. So that there would be no Amen. question. Yeah, let's, let's try to there would be no question that the barriers weren't encroaching on anybody else's property. He brought them in uh, from the boundary lines. And, um, you know, I'll... Uh, can you can you get on there? I mean, I don't want to see this held up because of a neighborhood dispute like that. And then try to help them out. Look, I have a good, re I have a good rapport with Mr. Sano. I mean, I'm not, I, I can't promise anything because I didn't... No, I understand that. But you've been always done the right thing around the city and I'm just asking you there's some way so we can keep going with this. Yes. And Mr. You know, Chairman, you know, in one way it, um, it's, it appears that the petitioner is, is renting him but he's giving them off, off street parking. Well, so he, he is helping them out. He, yeah. Well, I'm giving them a rent. Uh, yes. 1500 No problem with that. It's just accident to my shop. It, it was designed to have three bays I don't care the back side, but the front, besides, not the front, but the side open, open, uh, open door, I need that. It was important. That was the, the, that's why the building was designed structure wise to, yeah. to have that access. And it's, it's very, very uncomfortable. I can, I can get a car back in and I get the barrier. Well, and it's, it's very little. It's just a little corner. Sure. It's not like it's yeah, in the yeah, 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 you've gone over that and we understand. We have to proceed. There's other cases here we have to have yeah. here. And they are to get home at a good time, but everyone does. Uh, maybe he can help you over that. We can't relate that to what's before us. We can't force them or, or say we won't approve of this because of a neighborhood dispute. That's what it is, right? Anybody knows my cousin knows he's not a bully. I'm no. saying, Mr. Sano, we... Well, well it, 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 our, our purpose here is that's why I said it was a limited objection. Because we at least wanted to put it on the record. Yeah. I, I realize we're dealing with a, a neighborhood dispute. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ain't doing it. Why don't you make history? We'll still make money. I know. You did that one. You did this one. I know. You did this one. Yeah, this one here. Okay. Uh, well, let me see, I know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. That's this one here, right? You know what you mean? Yeah. All right, next case, Stephen, is 330 Boston Street. Uh, Mr. Cole, can you read that? 330? Yeah, 330, yeah. Petitioner Key Lim to allow additions to an existing non-conforming single-family residence on an undersized lot, 7,324 square feet, having insufficient frontage to convert to a two-family in zoning district R4. Thank you. Public hearing is not for those in favor. Please come forward, give me a name and address. What is your occupation? Uh, I'm a contractor. I'm his contractor. My name is Milton Santos, living in 56 Eastern Avenue, Riviera. Okay, please stay please. Uh, that is a, we are looking to convert that single family in a two family. That is a three, three stories, three floor already, and all those three floors is used by, used by owner. And uh, he is looking to convert the, that third floor, existing third floor living space, into a second apartment. Um, and for that, we have to, we are proposed to raise the roof on the rear room, that's something like uh, um, 15 by 15, just to have, we have a new wall on both sides of that room. So we want to raise it up just to have um, enough space for, uh, enough tall wall to, for cabinets. And for cabinets, because we have we have new wall on both sides for cabinets, cabinet yes. cabinets. Yes, yes. We have a new wall on both sides, so we want to raise it up just to have a, that modify the, the the roof a little bit, just to put a cabinet on that wall. That is in a that is only the back room. That's the two additions, right? Yeah, the addition is uh, one is a uh, fire escape, but that is in the same place that is existing little deck for the first floor. Yeah, you got plans there? Can you stretch them out on the Yes. Put them in the middle of the table. So the plot plan. Oh, put them over that way so everyone can see it. Explain it there. Yeah. This is the, the wall. Um, this is uh, the addition over here. We have existing small deck here. We're going to put a fire escape over here for the third floor. And over here, there is this corner. We're gonna so we gonna, is it going to be an outdoor set of stairs? Yeah, this one is going to be for um, private. You mean the, 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 one, the one that you said the fire escape? That's, that's on the yes. exterior of the building? Yes. yes. Inside or outside? Outside. 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 Yeah. That's going to be. Um, so that's, that's, yeah, exactly. To connect this, the stairs and the third floor to here. Um, the first floor and the second floor, we have that already inside. But this is going to be most for the third Where's floor. Where's the deck? The deck's going to be on the ground level? The, head, the deck is close to the uh, first level. It's a little deck. So we're going to remove it and put a fire escape with a staircase in that place over here yeah. on this corner. Yeah. And on front, private entrance for the second floor. For the second unit. Go oh, in. That's that's. Tell me. Uh, say that again. That's that's for the. That's another landing for the second floor. The front. Yes. Level. Yes. There is a, a stair all the way to the third floor inside. We're gonna uh, do a uh, exterior uh, booth for the set, for the second unit outside. Exterior. Just for just for private entrance. So, so another the, exterior staircase. Yes. Wow. Because the that is inside. But we need so you're gonna have two separate means of egress. Yes. One on the front, one for the first floor. Still we have that. Wait, wait, each apartment has two ways out. 
Is that what you're saying? No. Uh, the apartment, we have all the way, a uh, stair go all the way up to the third floor, inside. For the, the, the second apartment, we are looking to build a uh, stairway. Where's your floor plan? Got a floor plan there? Floor. Always on the floor. For the floor plane, but for here you can, you can see. What's existing? What's yes. existing there now? The existing. This is the existing. Not for floor plane, but for the floor. Uh, no, I mean, you have level. a floor plan for the existing. Uh huh. Yeah. For the existing. Yeah. You have a floor plan? Yeah, we, we do have it, but not, not here. Why not? Right, this is only for. That's where you go by, the floor plane. This one shows only the division. And uh, two split the first, the, the first, the first page. That is what we have now. And uh, this is the staircase uh, on the back. Now those staircases, why can't you enclose them? They'll be open in the winter with snow and ice on them all the way down there. The, the, yes, the, the rear one. Why can't you is, enclose them? We can we can close them. Yeah, it. that's dangerous. Yeah, okay. Okay. We can close it. We, we have can, a speculation you won't close it. Yeah, we can do that. And you'll match the building and everything. Yes. So why didn't you do that the bridge one? Because this is the first idea to do something for a better price. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but no. Yeah, just, but just to save money. Here, it's not going to look good. No. Okay. This is a residential piece of property. Right. It's going to be cut, look like it's an, some sort of small group home institution use with the exterior staircases like that. Right. We usually don't allow that many. We have two two bedrooms. How many bedrooms we have? Two two bedrooms on each each unit. Two six bedrooms now? Yes, for the both 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 units. That was no, three no. units. Uh, no, two units. These are three three floors. First and second floor has uh, one. But only two bedrooms. First and second floor only have two bedrooms. Or two bedrooms each floor. Four bedrooms. You have four yeah. four bedrooms on the second floor. Mm -hmm. And two bedrooms on the third floor. Third floor, yes. Six bedrooms total. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many bedrooms are there now? We have two. Is it two? Yes. Two how bedrooms many, on the third. How many are in the building now? Six. Four on the first floor, and uh, second floor, <laughs> and two on the third floor. The third floor that we are looking to uh, do on the second floor. So, how, right. how many on the first floor now? Bedrooms. First floor, we have any bed no bedroom. No bedroom in the first floor. No bedroom on the first floor now? No. What's there? Second floor. First What's on the first floor now? It's a kitchen and living room. Bed and bed. Oh, I see. So it's a down, it's a two, two floor apartment. Yes, yes. First and the second floor are going to be it's one apartment. It's a family house. Okay, right now it's a family house. It's a two, one, or three. Uh, this house is, this house is 32, 32 feet, feet wide and 53 feet long. Mm -hmm. You're telling me there's two, two rooms on the first floor? Two bedrooms, uh, yeah, the no, first floor is zero. How many bedrooms on the first floor? No bedrooms on the first no floor. On the How many rooms on the first floor? We have floor now. kitchen, three, three rooms. Yes. But that is a, that is a big uh, a space for staircase and go all the way to the second floor. Um, Stay by the first floor. have a living room and family. Hello, your yes. name and address? Uh, Your name? My name is Caleb. I uh, address 330 Boston Street. Okay. So you live there? Yes, I live there. 
the first floor has a, ki a kitchen, dining room, living room, and family room. Who drew the That's plans? All. Who? Uh, who drew the plans? Um, no bathroom. No bathroom on the second floor. And so, no, you're saying this is a, the, the, the petition going from two to three? No, it's a single going over two. Yeah, a single, yeah, single going over two. Yeah, single going over two. How many bedrooms are on the second floor? Four bedrooms. How many? Four. Four bedrooms Four. on the second floor? Yes. Include with the bathroom up there. I asked you again, who, who drew these plans? You had a professional doing it? Yes, Jim, uh, Jim, uh, I Is forgot the name. Is there a name on there? Yes, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. Bob, 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 so if you, there's a stipulation, you enclose those stairways, you can get a design to clarify that. The rear? Okay. No, I mean, you, you would need it. Mm -hmm. if it's a tool. Okay. So you can get them to do that ASAP, maybe. Mm -hmm. How many in your family, sir? How many people only live one, there? One family. No, but how many people. people? I have only three people. How many? Three. You and your wife and a... And a I have my son. Uh, there's, there's not a lot of information here. There's no layout of the house. There's no layout of bedrooms. There's no layout of any any yeah. interior. Yeah. Elevate. There's, there's nothing showing anything about this house at all. This house is 53 feet long by 34 feet wide, and it doesn't say how many rooms are in this building no, right it's now. Not four plans. Before or after they're starting. I mean, you're, you're giving them kind of wants to kind of do whatever they want here. Yeah, I know. You're gonna have to re you're gonna have to uh, refine these plans and clarify them. Okay. Especially uh, like Mr. Gishano says. Okay. Is it the plan to condo condo this building? Yes, uh it's not condo. This are two 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 famous. No, oh, because I'm just saying this is a two unit condominium building, so I didn't know if this was uh, yeah. I'd like to see what it looks like now and what it's gonna look like after. You're right. Okay. Yeah. At a minimum. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's uh you're going to have to do that because everyone else does in the city that comes in here. Mm -hmm. They always have the four plans. Okay. Tie it in together. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm not in favor of helping the other than that. It's okay. a good idea for them, but not to lay the plan on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you better get them on. When is the next meeting? Is that a month? It is March 20th. March 20th is the next meeting. Would you have March 20th? Already? Okay. What plans or whatever we talked about to enclose the exterior stairways? Anything else that needs to be addressed on that plan? Um, no, I mean, it shows your egresses, it shows your stairs, it yeah. shows the yeah. sections. It just doesn't show the layout of the house. There could right. be 35 rooms in this house, and yeah. they're adding a bunch of exits, you know what I mean? I know, it's, it's, I know that. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, let's proceed. Uh, Anyone have any more questions on that? Um, anyone else in favor of this petition? Anyone else in favor of this petition? You know, none of those in favor. I don't put those opposed. Anyone here opposed to this petition? Anyone here opposed to this petition? No, it's a letter in there. Opposed to him, opposed to opposed. What is the wish of the board? Um, there was a letter on this one. Yeah. Um, Dear Mrs. Curley, uh, Chairperson Lanzoni Commission, 330 Boston Street. Please be advised that I have not been contacted by the petitioner nor the neighbors regarding the above mentioned property. I stopped by the property room this evening. However, at, at this time, I will defer to your decision. Thank you in advance for your assistance. Peter Capano, Council Ward 6. Who is it? Council Capano. Oh, Capano, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you have not the same thing as <laughs> The council, he's concerned about seven. No, contact him. Okay. So you're going to have to Constant, do that. Council Park, okay. Apparently, yes. Anytime you do any work around any city or town, you know, around you, always contact the council. Okay, I'm going to give you this letter. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you can call the council office. He's got two numbers right down there. Excuse
Explain Call to him. Mr. Capano. Okay. Explain Thank to you. him what you want to do. What is the wish of the board? Continue to the March 30th, okay. uh, March 20th meeting. Yeah, for the, for the conditions. The full, a full set of uh, right. you know, plans that show the exterior, current and proposed. In the enclosures of this stairway. You understand what we want now? Yes, I do. Could you write it down so you don't forget it? Yes, I can. I can do that. I'll second that. Okay. Colin, uh, Colin. Mr. Wood? Yes, continue. Mr. Stono? Yes, to continue. Mr. Cole? Yep. Mrs. Cole? Yes, to continue. Mr. Kalman? Yes, to continue. Uh, Ms. Hines, please, for continuation. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, the next case is uh, 80 Mayfair May Street, uh, 9814. Sure, petition to Costas and Canella Bellissimus, close, <laughs> by their attorney Samuel A. Vitale, to allow subdivision of an existing lot in zoning district R1 to create two undersized lots. 8,660 square feet and 7,724 square feet, and to allow construction of a single perfect dwelling upon the smaller resulting undersized lot. Okay. I'm, I'm attorney of the with looking at process in the uh, Canela. Um, again, this is one, I'll, I'll read what I filed because I think it accurately reflects the current conditions. Um, the petition I filed said allow the reconfiguration of lots with a single family near on in the R1 single family district. Lot X with an existing single family near on with less than the required area, 8,660 square feet, and lot Y, 7,724 square feet, and to allow the construction of a new single family near on in lot Y. This is again registered land. Uh, and why I don't believe it's a subdivision, because we're not taking one and dividing it into two, we're taking three and making it into two, because as the registered land plan shows, it's three lots. Each of the lots is bigger than uh, adjoining lots and has frontage greater than adjoining lots that have houses on. So when Costas and his wife uh, built a home a few years ago, if you know the conditions up there, it's a lot of ledge and it's rocky, the city required for the construction of his own single family home. And as the registered land plan shows, Mayfair was a, a private un way undeveloped. Not that they developed the road to the front of their house, but they developed the road to the length of the way past their house. So, so it took them substantial money and time and they completed that and the city held a bond and this is to build their single family home. So they've expended thousands of dollars to improve a street on which extends and they're the only house on the street. Uh, when you have registered land, you just can't tamper with the uh, lot lines. I think we've talked about this before. The assessor, uh, if you own, lot a, you own lot A and you own lot B, he sends you one bill and he calls it for lot C, the sum of A and B, because he doesn't want to send two tax bills to the same owner who owns both adjoining lots. So here they own three lots. If you look at the deed, it says that they own 11A, 12A, and 13A. The deed describes three parcels. The total's in excess of 16,000 something square feet, and the frontage is way in excess of 75 feet. What they propose to do is to take the three lots that they own, which the assessor can't change and, and no one can change except the land court and the land court engineer <coughs> and the planning um, and make it into two lots. That's, that's step one. But to get to that step requires the approval of the land court engineers, which is another time consuming and costly process. Um, it's not easy and assuming you can get that, then you have to go back to the planning board. But now the planning board should be happy because They've already required, and they held the bond for the road to be built, and the road's got a finished coat, it's got a sidewalk, and it's built, but it extends into no man's land. And what they want to do is divide their three lots into two, their home on one, 
and be able to build a home on the adjoining lot. And that's the, the basis of their being before you because the requirement in a single family district is for 10,000 square feet. They have the requisite frontage, they just don't have 10,000 square feet. And given the conditions there and the uniqueness of this parcel and the conditions of the ledge and the, and the uh, rocky area, I think that they've actually endured a hardship so far in terms of the cost that the city imposed on them to build a road that essentially services their single house and then extends down beyond. And what they want to be able to do is to be, have the ability to build a home on the next lot and take the three and, and essentially turn it to two. If you were to approve this, they still would have to go to the land court engineers, and that's a several thousand dollar or several month process. And then they have to go, if the land court approves uh, the consolidation of three lots into two lots, there'd be a new land court plan. The land court shall uh, call their plans A, B, C, D as uh, properties get developed. And then uh, if that were to be done, what they would like to be able to do is to build a house on the new lot. The new house and this house conform to every requirement except lot size. Uh, each lot would have more than the required frontage. Um, this home right now would meet the, uh, all the other dimensional and parking regulations. Any home to be built would have to be built uh, in accordance with all the required dimensional regulations, including frontage. So the only relief they're looking for is lot size. And so, uh, again, they just finished in July, uh, over a period of a couple of years, the completion of the roadway. And now, uh, it's a growing family, and they want to be able to know that when uh, they can get a summer return in terms of the investment on the roadway, and be able to consolidate the three lots they have into two, one with the existing home and with a home, the other with a home to be built. So uh, one, it, oh, I'm sorry, go uh, ahead. It, so they bought the three lots, so they would have that you'd have you'd have a, a, a legal lot of open. Well, they had a lot of fire and excessive. If you look at the field card, uh, the assessors only tax you if you're in a single family district. You have a single family home. They tax you for 10,000 square feet at X, and then the excesses at Y. Yeah, no, I'm just saying they bought the three lot package so they could put a house on that because it would it met the, it met all requirements. Well, they didn't, they, yeah, but they didn't. Believe me, no, they didn't know that they were going to have to put a road. Okay. I'm just stating a fact. Yeah, no, I'm just telling the facts that they didn't realize that the city, even though they had the requisite lot size, required a road, a, a completed road, to be built with curbs and sidewalks. And you bought the land off of the abutta, who still owns the land, that basically the road now goes up to. Right, goes all the way to the end. To his park, to his, yeah. He now has frontage in... in uh, not, not frontage. Not frontage, but he's got... The uh, road goes up exactly, to Yeah, it goes all the way to the end. Side, it would be the side of his... Yeah. Just on Rockdale, so it would be yeah. the side of his... Um, but we were... Um, so it, it extends that way. That was uh, not an yeah. anticipated... Uh, who who owns the expense? land on the other side of Mayfair Street from you? That, that looks like they've, like that there's, if you look at it, it looks like there are lots and foundations that, yeah, are, big, big space. that are planned out. Who owns that land? You oh, know? The one, the one, the across the, across the street, right across the street from you. That's uh, Nick Hatzis. He owns all that too. Yes. Who does? Hatzis. Nicky. Oh, Nicky Hatzis. from Nicky's yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Who sold him this land? Yeah, right. Yeah. So that, um, yeah, the, but they imposed the requirement of building the road. So at some point, those lots will be developed, you think? Well, the road's there now. Yeah. I think you can get one more, this house, on that side. The, the it used to be a private, I mean, the land court had it as if you look at it, that it was a private way. That's what they relied on, they yeah. thought. Uh, no, I'm just saying because if- Now that's made it into a public way. If, if, we, if we shrink from the, from the 10,000 square foot, then the rest of those could make it laid out as well. Well, but if you look at the existing houses this is now. What, this is what we did for this, and so everyone should be now. Yeah, but, but if you look at what's there the now, that, that's part of their reasoning. What's there now is they, they're on a lot that's two and a half times bigger than every other house lot with a house on it. But, you know, um, and that's a, I'm, I know that property. I know you get it from Maryland 
way of Maryland Street, but I'm just saying, the original zoning up in when Ward 1 was for, for mass development like that, and I don't call that mass, but that's quite a few, that the, 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 the standard would be 10,000 square feet. That's all I'm saying. That was the purpose. But, when you got a but the board was giving relief many times. I'm not so. saying we're no, not. No, I'm no. just stating a fact. Yeah. This is sort of cutting it across. Now, okay, so they had the lots, and now they're cutting it back. Uh, they spend extra money on the street. But I'm just saying, are we set a, 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 a precedent here for the rest of it that this is developed that they can come in and expect that they can get lots for under 10000 yeah. the, lot, the lots that they have remaining, eight and six, are larger than the existing lots we're housing in right now. So going at eight and six, yeah, it's not 10, but look at the, look at the land court plan of the adjoining lots and their lot sizes. Yeah. And they have homes on it. It's all going to get when, if they were center development lots, wouldn't they develop them at 10,000 square feet? Well, that's what this one was. This one was sold at for, for one house and now being chopped into two. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just stating. Why would they sell it at 10,000 there instead of selling it? There were three lots. Because the land court has a plan. And the plan, in other words, if you added three, 4,000 square foot lots or whatever, you got to, so that the lots if it, that were laid out by somebody prior to them, were lots, and these are described as 11A, 12A, 13A, they're on that land court plan. And to get over the 10,000, you couldn't, they, they got three lots. They got them to 16,000 and something. So, so why, why, why this little lot over here? Why, not, why didn't they divide it right down the middle and then you would have? Because they wanted to make certain that they could keep their home with meeting all the requirements, including frontage, and that the lot that got created would meet all the requirements except lot size. So you have two lots that meet and exceed the frontage of all the adjoining lots that are larger than the adjoining lots. And if one has an existing house on it, they want to build a house on the other. Where's the third lot? There's three lots on the land court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to look at this. You look at the D. Look at this. Here's the land court. See the color? See what's black? Yeah, okay, those are three lots. Anytime you see LC is land court. Yeah, LC is registered land. But here's a deed, and it describes the lots right here. It's three parcels. One, two, three. And it's known as what? 11A, 12A, 13A on that uh, registered land. And at the time, it said it was a private way on the land. Now, that's been was a requirement that it be completed, and they did it. So this plot plan, you come to us for permission to build on this lot, you're not showing any foundation size, so there's no there's no. Well, plans I, I can show you, I had Mr. Reed, and I asked him to take it, but apparently he didn't, but no. I had a plan drawn that showed you could put a building, and I'll, I think I have it, uh, a building envelope, but we're not asking for any variances other than, oh, that is the plan, good read, okay, thank you. So um, here's, a, here's a plan with a building envelope that shows a 10-foot setback, uh, a 7 and a half foot sideline, a 15-foot radiator, a 7 and a half side, but the building wouldn't be anywhere near this big. It's what he called an envelope because it's 65 by 70. So clearly you can put a house there and two parking spaces and meet all the dimensional regulations and the parking regulations, and the lot would be 2,300 and something square feet, less than 10,000. You still have work to do on the existing house? No. Other than the landscaping. You don't even have any railings on the stairs. I'm sorry? No railings on the stairs? Those weren't required. Um, I didn't say that required. Oh, I just yeah, I was, uh, thought no, it was no, surprised. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no, it was past inspection. That's how we wanted the house. What's um, so not required? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry? Not required, you said. Where? Oh, the regular railings, uh, the stairs were plenty of fun, they said we didn't require... Uh, Wait a minute, which stairs are you talking about? The front stairs. The front, front stairs, railings are not required? The buildings were still going to have to happen. Uh, That's news to me. Because well, all over, like, a couple of rises, yeah. We, all right, I well... 
The only reason I asked is because she's pregnant, and I can't imagine her going down those stairs and not having a railing to hold on, that's all. I mean, I'm just telling you what I... No, I'll go up, that's, you know, from woman to woman, that's all. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, so, say that a little slowly. It just went over my head. I'm sorry. Costas. What's your name? My name is Costas Blismas, and I currently live at the right there. Street. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, those three, those lots with the three foundations you're you have um, concern about, those are all frontage on Rockdale. Yeah, and Rockdale. You, yeah, yeah right. on Rockdale. So. What we're asking wouldn't uh, affect them in any way, and if you look at if you look at the layout, it's all um, their backyard. Nothing's really developed. It's all ledge. Yes, um, well, that's it's part all of the ledge. They can't do Mountain anything to past those three. Basically, oh. th those three lots that are already dug out. It's you can't, you can't do anything there. back there. All you know, it's all line. ledge, um, and we're required by the city we to run a sewer line, a water line, and pave the street all the way up. And if you look at the end of my street, and hydrants, it goes up. Yeah, put the hydrant in. Yeah, put the hydrant yeah, in. Yeah, the the we put it all the way up, and it runs up this street that we were required to put in just to build our single family home, runs all the way up to this 20 foot ledge that has nothing but woods and more ledge behind it. So it's basically a road to nowhere. And when we first, um, when we first presented the plan to the planning board, uh, we had Ralph Reed um, draw out a plan that we would only develop the street enough for us to build our home. Mm -hmm. And that was denied to us, so we were required again to put in the sidewalks, high ground, and run everything. And water and sewer line. Because, and also, we were, we were required to run the water and sewer line all the way up that could support more homes. So because right. of that, I'm, we're petitioning now to be able to put another home to use what we were basically required to do in the first place. So and, the, and the process was such. Uh, Thank you. You had to post the money. You had to put yeah. the money up. And a bond. And they were bond. Right. I mean, yeah. They're not, you know, subdivision developers. And, and because I said to him, why did it take so long? He said, because of cash flow. Because we, we couldn't find a contractor who would work on the theory that, well, the money's sitting over there. They wanted the money. <clears throat> they had the money. But, but the city had it. So, getting back to showing us a, um, a basically the the exterior boundaries of the lot, but nothing of even the footprint of what a house would look like. I, I asked Reed to, to stake it. I'd be glad to have him stake it. Yeah, I, yeah look, that that, I, that I'd like to but, see. but I said to Constance, yeah. he he, and I asked Reed. He, he said, I, I said, why is it so big? He said it's a, it's a building envelope. He meant it was so big that you could put a house within there. But there's no house that's going to be 70 by whatever he's got there. So can we can we see that and stake it out? Yeah. I mean, think about because I said to him, what? no house. Look, I mean, look at the size of the house. It's no way near there. No. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I think that's normally what we would vote on. Would be at least. Yeah, and I had asked him, and then when I realized he didn't, I said, I got to have something that demonstrates that the only thing I want is a variance. For well, lot size, not for frontage, setback, re uh, sideline. Yeah, Mr. Cole, yeah. you want to continue? For yeah, just for a month and let him. All right, you have no objections. If we, yeah, I mean, we can if we can wait a month. Give us something that we can vote on and say that's what the. Can you hang on that one? That's the size of the house. Yeah, I, I <laughs> asked. So we're not, hey, we're not asking her to hang on. Well, 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 well I'm going to stop bringing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop bringing pregnant women to these events. <laughs> So, I mean, God love her. If you remember Anthony, who was here on Minot Street, he was here tonight. I don't know why he was here. I have to call him. Remember, his wife was expecting like any day when we were here last. He was out back here. Maybe he just enjoys it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right. So, all right. Let's see if we can proceed. Yeah. And, uh, anyone else in favor of so, this petition? Here and there. Those opposed. Anyone here opposed to this petition? I don't see anyone. Uh, the public hearing is closed. Uh, what is the wish of the board? Just continue it, uh, continue it so that we can at least see the 
what the footprint is going to be on the on the, uh, right. the new house lot. Okay. So we can see the dimensions and stake it out, please. Okay, yeah, do you understand that? Yeah, so I understand. Yeah. All right. Can I also, I would like to see the lot, stake the lot itself, and then I would like Good. to see the house. Okay, so stake the You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Stake the four cars. Yeah. 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 Right. Thank you. You can get the plans from there down there to the, uh, you know, to do a scribbling. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. next nice regular meeting. I don't want to uh, call them all. Mr. Wood? Yes, continue. Mr. Chisona? Yes, continue. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Callan? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank Good luck. Sam. We'll see you. Thank you. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sam. Thank you. Sam. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have two yeah. more. <laughs> I'll watch them first. Yeah, we don't miss. We might have two more cases, but we only have one person. I'll call. I'll call. She said she was okay. Yeah. Okay. She should do the 21st, right. right? Okay, the next case we have, this gentleman in the back, is 13, 13 O'Leary Place. Mr. Cole, could you read that? Which one are we doing? Oh, uh, 13 O'Leary. Are you sure? <laughs> no, you sure you want to do that one? So, 13 O'Leary. Petitioner William Butt to allow demolition and reconstruction of a 9 by 19 first floor addition to an existing single family residence located upon an undersized lot, 4,217 square feet in zoning district R2 that encroaches within the minimum rear setback. Thank you. Hey, public hearings now will close in favor. State your name and your address. Mark Fournier, 63 Commonwealth Road, Lynn. Okay, you can proceed. Um, well, uh, this is a continuation. We needed to see some more um, uh, uh, plans on what was uh, right. happening there. And you've supplied all of that? And yes, I did. And um, so uh, basically, uh, we're supply. just uh, taking down what's there, uh, replacing the same size on the same no. footprint. Um, Single story. So we got your plans. Yeah. Well, what I didn't see was the revised plot, uh, plot plan over here. Uh, for what? Uh, because this one has the the uh, entrance and the deck on the right hand side. Yeah. And you know, you uh, you came and explained no, the windows going there and the sliders are going on this side of yes. the. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you you did what you were supposed to do, but this didn't get done. But, I mean, if people are comfortable with this, I don't, we can move, proceed as long as they get this in Ralph Reed by the time that she files it. Right, yeah. Okay. But I don't know if anybody else has any, any questions or not, but this is... I don't. You know. I don't have any. No. I think he's going to do a good job, right? Absolutely. He always does a good job. 40 years, so. Yeah. Anyone, you, you finished? Yes. Uh, anyone else can't favor this over there? Uh, and there's no one opposed, and it's all empty chairs, I guess. So, what is the wish of the board? Motion to grant addition with the stipulation that they would just submit a revised plot plan showing the, the, the revised um, structure. Entrance. That, okay, that's you all. understand that? Yes. You'll get on that now. I'm going to give it to them, right? Okay, do I hear a second to that? Second. I don't know. Second by Mrs. Curley. Call the room. Mr. Wood. Yes, Mr. Green. Mr. Chisano. Sure. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> you want to take this so you can show him? Mr. Cole. I, I have I have one. Yes. I have a copy. You do. Yes. So you know what you know what we're looking for. Mr. Cameron. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we're going to show you the Mrs. Uh, you know. side. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and just get him down to uh, Mary. Yeah. That's all. Under the lead. All set? Yep. Thank you, Thank you yep. very much. And I'm sorry yeah. about the interruption. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, we're yep. just going to say the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, there's two cases. 
There's no, there's no shows here. One of well, we have a letter. Yeah. We have a letter on one case, if you want me to read oh, it. Windsor Ave, yeah, yeah, please read that. We have a letter <coughs> regarding Windsor. Hiram? Windsor Ave, that's the deck on the back. I know, Hiram's, it's also Hiram's. Oh, so, um, this is from uh, Crystal Barrera. My, my name is Crystal, I spoke, uh, this is directed to Mary Gilkes, I spoke to you, uh, uh, you on Friday about the hiring we are supposed to attend on, on t uh, 2020, so I'm sure she means, yeah. yeah. But we'll need more time to get our land surveyed. You mentioned the next um, hearing is on 3 March 20th. Please confirm we are okay to attend on that day. Feel free to email or call me if you have any questions or concerns. So a motion would be in order to continue this case? Yes. Okay. I hear a motion. Motion to continue. Second. Second. Call roll. Mr. Wood. Yes, Mr. Gisano. Yes. Mr. Cole. Yes. Mr. Callum. Yes. Mrs. Curley. Yes, to continue. Okay. All right. Now the other one is uh, 150 Essex Street. Mr. Cole, could you read the the uh, wording on that? Yeah, that was petition of Paul Yu by his attorney John Myhouse to allow conversion of an existing two-family structure located in Zoning District R4 upon an undersized lot, 5,180 square feet, with front, rear, and side yard encroachments to a th three-family structure. Okay, what is the reason for on this? Why isn't uh, he here? Well, why isn't he here, do we know? We don't know. Well, we'll send him a letter. Send him yeah, uh, do, we allow, do we have enough time to allow this to continue to march? Is the Mary? March 20th. Uh -huh. Is there still? Hold on, let me look at the meeting. If you know, you should call for me. Yeah. How much, how much extra time? I think Maybe it's getting close. It is getting close. Yeah. I did call um, Attorney Miles. How did he say? Nothing. Did he call you back? He called me back, but I said, you know, don't forget the meeting. Well, I think we give him one last chance. Yeah. Well, we I'll get because we're on the town. What are we saying there? He said, you expect him to be here? Or? He didn't say. Yeah, you should call him. I'll call him again. Tell him it's from the town. He didn't say he was or he wasn't coming. He just no. said thank you. Yeah, tell him to yeah. come down and sign a new one today. Order, you know. I didn't say he'd come around. Mr. Cole, wait, have another, have him sign something else. <coughs> You know, give him one more chance, and then yeah. if he doesn't comply with, you know, like No, it may be his client to uh, have him decide what they want yeah. to do. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. so. You don't know. So a motion is an order to send him a letter to that, to that extent. Okay. And we'll make, make a motion. Sure, I'll make that motion. Yeah. I'll second it. So you all made a motion. This is going to take a call on that. Mr. Wood? So it's a motion to send a letter? Yeah. yeah. Continue and send the letter. Okay, yeah. yes, continue and send the letter. Mr. Tusano? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Cameron? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Curley? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I think that's it on these things. Motion to adjourn? Uh, well